guys, how's it going? TJ here with Dead History, and today is our next presidential series installment, and we're going to be looking at, yep, the guy behind me, the 19th president of the United States, Rutherford B. Hayes. I'm flying solo today, Henry's not with me, but first, before we get into Rutherford B. Hayes, what I need you to do is hit subscribe down below, give us a like and a thumbs up, leave those comments and questions, we love the comments and questions, and of course, hit that little notification bell so you can be notified every single time we release a new video, which is, as Henry would say, every single week. So, now, sit back and relax, because we're going to take a look at the 19th President of the United States, Rutherford B. Hayes, and this is Dead History. Hey guys, TJ here with Dead History, back with you, and yep, the guy behind me, the 19th President of the United States, Rutherford B. Hayes. I got some really cool things to tell you about Rutherford B. Hayes, such as, he was actually the first president to graduate law school. Yes, we had a lot of lawyers as presidents, but he was the first to actually graduate law school, very highly educated man, same with his wife, the first lady. Both were extremely educated, which was kind of rare as president. We'll get into all that. He was also the very first president to ever travel to the West Coast. Yeah, he was the one that went and he saw the Rockies, he saw California. He's the very first one to travel to the West Coast as president. We're going to tell you all about that. And then, of course, how could I ever talk about Rutherford B. Hayes without bringing up the election of 1876? In the election of 1876, Rutherford B. Hayes took on Samuel Tilden, and it ended up being probably the most controversial, debated election ever in the history of our country. I know, in recent times, we're very used to the whole controversial elections, and what's real, what's not, and all these debates, both sides of the aisle, but this one of 1876, trust me, a lot of very interesting things going on with that election. We're going to get into all that. So you did the likes, did the subscribes, you did the comments, you did it all, notification bell. What I need you to do now is sit back and relax and enjoy. As Henry would say, grab those potato chips. Because we're going to take a really cool look at the 19th president of the United States. The man behind me with the great beard, Rutherford B. Hayes. Enjoy. Hey guys, how's it going? TJ here with Dead History, and welcome to our next presidential series installment, looking at the 19th president of the United States, Rutherford B. Hayes. I am flying solo for this week's uh, edition, so uh, I'm going to jump right into it here and uh, discuss the early life and childhood and that sort of thing of Rutherford B. Hayes. So, Rutherford Burkhard Hayes, I believe it's pronounced Burkhard, uh, his middle name. Rutherford Burkhard Hayes was born in Delaware, Ohio on October 4th of 1822. He was born to Rutherford Hayes Jr. and Sophia Burkhard. Hayes' father, who was a Vermont storekeeper, had taken the family to Ohio in 1817. He died 10 weeks before Rutherford B. Hayes' birth. So Sophia, his mother, took charge of the family, raising Hayes and his sister, Fanny, the only two of the four children to, to, to survive to adulthood. So his other siblings did not make it uh, into adulthood. She never remarried, and Sophia's younger brother, Sardis Burkhard, lived with the family for a time. He was always close to Hayes and became a father figure to him, contributing to to his early education. <clears throat> so pretty interesting fact there about uh, Hayes' uncle uh, and that sort of thing. Now, as I just said, he was raised by his mother. His mother, Sophia, raised uh, Rutherford and his sister, Fanny, on her own. Uh, his father did die uh, about 10 to 11 weeks before his birth. Uh, his mother was able to raise money by renting out a farm near their home. In addition, like I said, the uncle the uncle helped out uh, the family. Uh, he bought the siblings books and other items. Um, and sadly, actually, his sister, Fanny, died of dysentery in 1856 in childbirth. Uh, and Rutherford B. Hayes was, was very devastated by his sister's death. 
1856. So, a uh, pretty interesting fact there about, uh, you know, Hayes and his uh, siblings. He, uh, he did attend the common schools in Delaware, Ohio, and he enrolled in 1836 at the Methodist Norwalk Seminary in Norwalk, Ohio. Uh, he did well at Norwalk, and the next year he transferred to the Webb School, a preparatory school in Middletown, Connecticut, where he studied Latin and ancient Greek. Returning to Ohio, he attended Kenyon College in uh, Gambier in 1838. He enjoyed his time at Kenyon and was successful uh, scholastically. While there, he joined several student societies and became interested in Whig politics. His classmates included Stanley Matthews and John Kelvergos Zakos. He graduated Phi Beta Kappa and with highest honors in 1842 and addressed the class as valedictorian. So, very interesting stuff there about Hayes and his uh, education. Uh, And, you know, he did have an early interest in politics. He was a very good student, like I said, having attended the Norwalk Seminary and uh, preparatory program before going to Kenyon. Uh, He graduated as valedictorian there from Kenyon, as I said. Uh, He became, while he was at Kenyon, he became keenly interested in the election of 1840. And he wholeheartedly supported William Henry Harrison and wrote in his diary that he was never more elated by anything in my life when Harrison won the election uh, of 1840. So pretty cool stuff. I found that pretty fascinating. Um, what's another good thing here? Okay. Here's a very cool thing. He actually studied uh, law at Harvard in Columbus, Ohio. Hayes studied law. He was then admitted to Harvard law school from which he graduated in 1845. After graduation, he was admitted to the Ohio bar. He soon was practicing law in Lower Sandusky, Ohio. Any of you uh, Tommy Boy fans out there, the movie Tommy Boy, that is uh, the setting of Tommy Boy, Sandusky, Ohio. So there you go. Uh, However, unable to make enough money there, he ended up, this is Hayes, he ended up moving to Cincinnati in 1849. And it was there he became a successful lawyer in Cincinnati. So... Really cool stuff there about uh, Hayes and his law, you know, his law career. And I'm going to touch on that a little bit uh, further, too, about uh, him being a lawyer and graduating from law school. Uh, He married Lucy Ware Webb Hayes on December 30th of 1852. Hayes married Lucy Ware Webb. Her father was a doctor who had passed away when she was a baby. And Webb met Rutherford B. Hayes in 1847. She would attend Wesleyan Women's College located in Cincinnati. And in fact, she would become the first president's wife to graduate from college. So very interesting thing there. Uh, Lucy was strongly against enslavement and strongly for temperance. Uh, In fact, she banned alcohol at the White House state functions, leading to the nickname Lemonade Lucy. The pair of them had five children. Hayes and his wife had five children. Four sons named Sardis Burkhard, James Webb, Rutherford Platt, and Scott Russell. They also had a daughter named Frances Fanny Hayes. Their son James, he would actually become a hero during the Spanish-American War. So pretty interesting fact there about uh, Hayes and his wife's son. Uh, And as I touched on, Hayes and his wife, the First Lady, Lemonade Lucy, as they called her, they were unusually well-educated. Although a number of previous presidents were lawyers, there were several that were lawyers, Rutherford B. Hayes was the first to actually graduate law school. As I said, he attended Kenyon College and was valedictorian of his class in 1842. Uh, Hayes then put a vexatious and tedious 10 months at a Columbus, Ohio firm, after which he earned a degree from Harvard Law School in 1845. And his wife, as I said, was the first first lady to be a college graduate. She received her degree in liberal arts from the uh, Cincinnati Wesleyan Female College in 1850, and she was only 18 years old uh, when she received her degree. Uh, So pretty cool stuff. I mean, they, as a first lady and president, they were really well-educated, uh, and which was not always the case, obviously, with the previous presidents. 
Uh, Rutherford B. Hayes, he actually did fight uh, for the Union in the Civil War, during the Civil War. In 1858, Hayes was chosen as Cincinnati City Solicitor. However, once the Civil War broke out in 1861, Hayes decided to join the Union and fight. He served as a major for the 23rd Ohio Volunteer Infantry. And during the war, he was wounded four times, actually quite seriously, at the Battle of South Mountain in 1862. However, he served through the end of the war. He eventually became a major general, and he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives while serving in the military during his uh, service. And however, he didn't officially take office until the war ended. And then he served in the House, House of Representatives, from 1865 to 1867, which we're going to get into in a little bit as well. Uh, but very cool. As I just touched on, he was wounded multiple times during the Civil War. Seven U.S. presidents served in the Civil War, and Rutherford B. Hayes was the only one who was wounded in action. Rutherford B. Hayes was nearly 40 years old and had no military experience at the start of the conflict. He had spent his life up to that point as a lawyer, and after five years of practice at a lower Sandusky, Ohio law firm, he moved to Cincinnati in 1849, as I said, where his opposition to slavery drove him to the Republican Party. He was outraged by the attack on Fort Sumter in 1861, so he then Hayes then joined the Burnett Rifles, a volunteer home company, and was named a major in the 23rd Ohio Volunteer Infantry. The unit also included a fellow future president, William McKinley, who noted that Hayes' demeanor, uh, de demeanor would change markedly in battle. From the sunny, agreeable, the kind, the generous, the gentle gentleman, he was once the battle was on, well, he was, once the battle was on, he was intense and ferocious. So, very cool thing there uh, about Hayes. Hayes may have had the eye of the tiger, but his list of wounds and ailments was lengthy. He had a wounded knee at Parisburg in 1862, a gunshot wound in the left arm during the Battle of South Mountain in 1862. That was the real bad one I said. A hit from a spent musket ball and having his horse shot out from under him at the Second Battle of Kernstown in 1864. A severe ankle injury when another one of his horses was shot in the Battle of Cedar Creek in 1864. In this final incident, Hayes then weathered a shot from a spent musket ball upon mounting a second horse, leading his men to assume he'd been killed. His death was erroneously reported in the press, and Cedar Creek was actually his final battle. Uh, so, very interesting stuff about Hayes in the Civil War. Um, but he was a Civil War veteran, and he was a wounded Civil War veteran. Uh, as I touched on a little bit ago, uh, Rutherford B. Hayes was nominated by the Republicans to run for the House of Representatives before the end of the Civil War. However, he refused to leave his post with the Army to campaign, saying that an officer fit for duty who at this crisis would abandon his post to an elector, uh, electioner, electioneer for a seat in Congress ought to be scalped. He won the election anyway and began his career in public service. As a congressman, Hayes worked for the freedom and protection of slaves in the South after the Civil War. He wanted to be sure that the Southern states would enforce laws protecting former slaves. And then in 1867, he, Rutherford B. Hayes left the House of Representatives to become governor of Ohio. He served as the governor of Ohio. Hayes was elected as the governor of Ohio in 1867. He served in that capacity until 1872. And he was re-elected in 1876. However, at that point, he was chosen to run for the presidency. So his time as governor was spent enacting civil service reforms. Um, so pretty interesting stuff. So that's kind of, uh, we're going to end this part one there on that note. Uh, leading up to Hayes' presidency. That was kind of his, his birth, his childhood, his early education, his law school education. His time uh, as a soldier in the Civil War, and then his time in the House of Representatives, and of course, uh, as governor of Ohio. So in part two tomorrow, we're going to touch on his presidency, and then of course his death, and his final resting place. So stay tuned for that. Thank you as always for the great support. 
Thank you for the subscribes, the comments, the questions. Seriously, can't thank you guys enough. This has been an awesome, awesome journey. We're only four months into this. I just started this back in November. And, you know, we're already at or closing in on like 3,000 plus subscribers on here. So thank you so much. Uh, and we will see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye now.